Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We serve a mighty God, and He is worthy of the praise. Put those hands together. If you know the Lord has been good to you, clap those hands. God bless you, everyone. We just welcome you to Second Chance Church. Well, we live streaming today, and this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm certainly glad that God is a mighty God. Thank God for 
the ministry, we're going to go into our communion service right now. So get you some water if you don't have any grape juice or crackers or bread or whatever you have. We're going to sanctify it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How many know God's been good to us this week? sharing with us today. Make sure you share with someone else. In 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, starting at verse 23, Scripture read, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this is the cup, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he becomes. Comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup, the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. But those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. Shall we pray? Father God, we Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And we bless your holy name today. Lord, whatever we are using as communion, we ask you to sanctify it. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to share in communion representing the blood and the body of Jesus. So Lord, we thank you that he died on the cross for us. That he shed his blood so that we might have a right to the tree of life. So bless us right now. Bless those out there that are streaming in right now. We claim victory today. We ask you to forgive us for our sins and be with us during this worship experience. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we give you all the praise. Amen. Take heed. For this represents his broken body. Drink ye all of it. For this represents the blood that is shed for the remission of all of our sins.
conference this morning. Amen. Again, we want to, one again, want to welcome you to our, our worship service. And the first thing I want to do is I want to say congratulations to Minister Jerome, our Minister of Music here, and Sister Paula on them celebrating their anniversary on yesterday. We thank God for that. Amen. Text him last night and told him to get Paula whatever she wanted. Amen. So I'm going to be checking with Paula later today. God is awesome. God. Then I want to thank everybody. I just simply want to say thank you to everybody that um, came out to worship last Sunday, celebrated. Sister Sherry, thank you for everything that you do and celebrating my birthday and Sister Lana and all of you that put together the celebration. Worship service was awesome outside in the parking lot last Sunday. It was just good to see you outside. It was good to see you and social distancing is tough and I'll be glad when we are able to come back into the house of God. But for right now, we, we're doing what we have to do. And I just thank God for all of you that live streaming that sent birthday wishes and cards and gifts and prayers. You are an awesome um, church family and those that are live streaming, you are awesome. My family from all over, wherever you are, I thank God for you and I just want you to know I love you. Don't forget the food drive on Tuesday. Starts at 9 o'clock. We need volunteers. God is allowing us to be a beacon of light during dark times in this country, so we want you to um, come out and get food as fresh produce. Um, come out and get food, and if you can come out and help, uh, just stop by and help us on Tuesdays at 9. Amen. God bless you. And I want to thank God for all of the volunteers and everything you do. Um, God bless you. I just want you to know I love you. This live streaming has been uh, a unique experience for myself and for the Second Chance Church family and probably for all of the churches, but without the help of my daughter, Lakeisha, in Little Rock, Arkansas, and Lana, they make this possible to keep this service going. And then we've got our musicians and our praise team and our church family that comes out, and I thank God just for all of you. This is an awesome experience. It's a unique experience. It's a new experience. So I just ask you to pray for me today. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. One thing is for sure. I don't know about you, but I love Jesus. If you love Jesus, come on, put some hearts on there. Just say, Jesus, I love you. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips today. Hallelujah. God is so wonderful. He is so merciful and kind toward us. And we truly thank him for being who he is. Jesus, I love you.
So, and, and then in the book of Jonah, there's at least four miracles that God provided in the book of Jonah. And, and the first one is that he provided a great fish. So as we move through the book of Jonah, I'd ask that you do some studying for yourself to see if you can find the other miracles and look at the context of what the kings were doing at that time. So the scripture reads, uh, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. And says, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. And I just want to lift, and that's Jared, Jonah 3, verses 1 through 2. I just want to talk about a God of a second chance. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for your word today. We ask that your word would bring relevant, would bring revelation, that it would bring healing, that it would bring deliverance that it would bring salvation. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. So we're talking about a God of a second chance, a God of a second chance. This morning, I want you to allow your mind to imagine this setting. I want you to picture John. He, he looks a mess. He's just been delivered. He's been a long way and gone through a lot. He left home one morning with Tarshish on his mind. You remember the song, I Got George on my mind? He left home with Tarshish on his mind. Your, your, your mind can mess you up sometimes. His mind told him that if he wanted to escape and get away from God, that he could get on a ship and go on a cruise. Have you ever watched a mystery on TV? The, the plot gets better. The title of the mystery is Missing for 72 Hours. He never thought that the cruise ship he was going to get on was going to end up in a storm. He went down to Joppa and purchased his ticket and bought him a suite on the lower level. On his way to the room, he stopped by the casino and he ordered him a cocktail. A rum and cola, absolute and 
cranberry juice, a grape juice and wine, a shot of Peron, a Patron. And he went to his room, put, put his do not disturb sign on his door, took his phone off the hook, turned off his TV, put his iPod on with his earphones in his ears and started listening to Frankie Beverly and Mays live in LA singing Joy and Pain. Drank his cocktail and went to sleep. He slept so hard that he did not know that the ship was in a monsoon. Matter of fact, he didn't wake up until the captain banged on his door. He got up with sleep in his eyes. They brought him to the upper deck. The sailors had borrowed some dice from the casino on the top part of the ship. And now the sailors used the dice to cast lots to see who was responsible for the storm. The Bible says that the lot fell on John. So now the ship transforms into a courtroom. The sailors hold a criminal investigation against John. And the Bible says they ask him seven questions. And what Jonah does now is he admits to his mistake. He finds himself guilty and he takes responsibility for his disobedience. Jonah tells him that I'm a fugitive from God, and if they want the storm to end, that you need to throw me in the sea. The Bible says that the sailors first try to go back to land, but the storm gets strong. So finally they throw Jonah in the sea. My Bible says that Jonah sinks down to the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. He has seaweed wrapped around his neck. And if it had not been for the Lord who was on his side, he would have drowned. But my Bible says that God provides a great fish to swallow Jonah. Jonah thought he was going on a five-day cruise to Tarshish, but he finds himself in the whale's belly for three days and three nights. God gave Jonah some reflection time. God put Jonah in time out. God put Jonah in the thinking spot. I wonder if God has us in reflection time with this social distancing, with us not being able to come to church to worship as a family. I wonder if God is giving us some reflection time. And when God gives you time to reflect, if you're honest with yourself, you'll see yourself for who you really are and right where you are in life. Oh, the God I serve will give you time to reflect. So in the belly of this will, Jonah begins to think about the goodness of God. For three days and for three nights, he does nothing but reflect on the goodness of the Lord with a spirit of thanksgiving. And my Bible says that the Lord commands a fish to swim to the shore and vomit Jonah up on the dry land. Are you with me so far? So the scene of our text this morning opens with Jonah laying on the shore. I need you to use your spiritual imagination this morning. He's been in the belly of an instrument that God used to get his attention for three days and for three nights. He's not, had a, he's not been able to shave, has not had a haircut, has not been able to take a bath. He's got the same clothes on that he had when he ran away from the Lord. He smells like vomit. It's amazing how far we will go and what we will do to get away from God. But it's amazing how patient God is with us. God uses unusual things and ways to save us from ourselves. Sometimes he'll use a wrecked car and he'll allow you to come out through the windshield but not die. Maybe an accident on your job. A sickness that the doctors can't cure. A breakup in a marriage, sometimes in jail, a funeral of a loved one. Maybe even COVID. Maybe even racism. God uses unusual ways to get our attention. I've learned that God knows how to whip us but still love us at the same time. Now, now between chapter 1 and chapter 3, Jonah has had a rough time. But what I like about Jonah is that he didn't blame his problems on everybody else. 
He didn't blame it on the captains or the sailors. He didn't blame it on the storm. Jonah said, I know why I'm in this dilemma. When you find yourself in a tough situation, you need to stop blaming everybody else. Don't blame your problems on the system. Jonah says, look, I know why I'm in this storm. I, it's because of my disobedience. Then chapter 3 verse 1 says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah. The word came to Jonah. God picked Jonah again. God was not through with Jonah. And God's not through with you. You know, I realize that most of us are not like God. Because if you hired someone and gave them an opportunity to work for you and they walked away from their assignment, you would not go chasing after them. You would hire somebody else. But God is not like that. I'm glad that God is not that kind of God. The text says the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Now that's good news for me. It is good to know that God is a God of a second chance. Matter of fact, I can say that he's God of a third, a fourth, a fifth, a chance. Matter of fact, I'm up in the thousands now because I was hard-headed. Yeah. But all through the Bible, God was always giving men and women chance after chance. If you would ask Abraham, he would tell you, I serve a God of a second chance. If you would ask Samson, he would tell you, I serve a God of a second chance. If you would ask Moses, he would tell you, I serve a God of another chance. If you would ask David, David would tell you that God has given me so many chances that I can't even keep up with them now. Peter would tell you, I serve a God of another chance. How many times has God knocked at your door? Revelation 3 and 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He says, You may not know that I'm at the door if I just stand here. He says, I'm going to knock. He says, Not only am I going to knock, but he says, I'm going to holler. If any man hear my voice, if any woman hear my voice, if any child hear my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will eat with him and I will sup with him. You know, some of us have been in church a long time and still not made a commitment to Christ. Every time you hear the gospel, there's a call going out that leads you from darkness into the marvelous light. Every time you hear the word, there's a call to commitment. Every time you hear the word, there's a call for you to come into covenant with God. And every time you reject that call, there's a possibility that you might not get that chance again. The Bible says the word of the Lord came to Jonah a, a second time. Go to that great city of Nineveh. In other words, God says, Jonah, even though you are a screw up in the, the sign, he said, even though you are a screw up, the assignment is still available. I've discovered that God doesn't need us. Because if you won't do it, somebody else will. What I'm doing this, this afternoon on this live stream, God can use a donkey and make it so that you would understand from the donkey that the wages of sin are still death. But the gift of God is eternal life. What I'm doing up here this morning, God could use anybody to do it. In other words, if I don't preach it out, a bird would sing it out. A worm would wiggle it out. A bee would buzz it out. The wind could blow it out. The river could grow it out. God does not need you and I to do anything. So we ought to be grateful anytime he gives us an opportunity to serve him in any manner on his program. God can use whomever and whatever he pleases. Yes. And anytime God gives you a job and you won't do it the first time, and he gives you another chance, that's his mercy at work. Somebody ought to thank God for mercy this morning. Somebody ought to thank God for his sparing mercy this morning. God came back to Jonah the second time and said exactly what he said the first time. And one of the reasons I think that God gave gave Jonah another chance because Jonah had a spirit of repentance. In chapter 2, you, you can see several times where Jonah repents. 
If you read chapter 2, it sounded like, sound like Jonah changed his mind. And repentance mm -hmm. is when you change your mind about yourself. When you change your mind about your sins. And when you change your mind about your Savior. Listen to Jonah in, in, in verse 2, verse 9. He says, with songs of thanksgiving, I will sacrifice to you. And then he says, what I vow, I'll make good. You see, when you repent, you just don't say it. When you repent, you do it. After all Jonah had gone through, he was ready to do God's will. You can tell by how he was praising God. Right. You can tell by how he was bragging on the Lord. You can tell about how he talked about how gracious God was. He talked about how the Lord delivered him. Have you ever seen someone who was in a storm? They got sick or they went to jail and you went to see them and while they were laying on their sick bed or while they were in jail, they would say, you know, if the Lord ever gets me out of this situation, I'm going to work for him. I'm coming to church just as soon as I get out. You've heard that, haven't you? And as soon as they get out, some of them will stop by for a little while and then some of them won't even keep their word. The Lord hears you when you make those statements. Lord, if you get me out of this mess, I'll do what you tell me to do. Or if that was the case, all of the live streams across this country would be full right now if every one of us kept our promises to the Lord. The Bible says the word of the Lord came to Jonah again the second time. God is not like us, most of us. If someone messes up, we write them off. But God is not like that. When you mess up, won't he give you a second chance? If you stumble, won't he pick you up again? If you stray away from him, he'll go back and get you over and over again. He, he'll do you like the one that strayed away. He'll leave the 99 to come and get you again. I just want you to know this morning that if you've been stumbling, the God I serve will give you another chance. And what I discovered about God is that he never panics when we panic. God does not have to run after us. He knows how to rescue us. He knows how to reclaim us. He knows how to resurrect us. He knows how to restore us. He knows how to redeem us. I heard him say to Jonah, arise and go to Nineveh and proclaim the message I gave you. In Jonah verse 1, chapter 1 and verse 2, God says, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach. Now in chapter 3, verse 1, he tells Jonah a second time to go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim. He told Jonah to preach and proclaim. Preach and proclaim. That word preach or proclaim in the Hebrew word is kara, which means to cry out or to utter with a loud voice. As I close, Isaiah 51, it says, Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion. God tells Jonah to cry out and preach and proclaim the message with a loud voice. And well, I know that some of you, when you used to sit in church, would say, it don't take all that. Why are you so over the top? You don't have to keep up all that noise. You can worship the Lord quietly. You can preach quietly. You can proclaim quietly. Well, can you imagine your house being on fire and the fire truck is trying to get through traffic, playing some funeral home music? Are you praying with me? Your house will burn down before the truck gets to you. Because nobody's going to move out of the way with some soft music being played. But when the fireman turns on the sirens and the flashing light, 
people hear them coming and they pull over and they get out of the way and they pay attention. Well, what the Lord is saying to us today is that souls are on fire and people are dying and on their way to a burning hell. And there's only one, one solution to put the fire out. And that's preaching, that's proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. No wonder Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. And in this world, it's not time to be soft and cute. There's fire burning, so we need some shoulders that will shout, that will scream the gospel of Jesus Christ if the world is going to be saved. It's going to be saved through the preaching and proclaiming of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I heard him say, proclaim what I told you to proclaim. He said, don't preach what you want to preach. Don't preach what feels good. Don't preach just to entertain but you tell them what I told you to tell them. No matter how low down the people are, you gotta tell them God is a God of love. No matter how crooked they are, you gotta tell them that God can straighten their crooked ways out. You, you do know he can lift up a bowed down head. You do know that he can mend a broken heart. So God tells Jonah to preach. Well, what should I preach in a season such as this? Well, just tell them one Friday, on a hill called Calvary. My Lord and Savior went out on the cross. He gave his hands to the nails. He gave his side to the spear. Yeah. He gave his feet to the spikes. Yeah. Tell him he died that we might live. Yeah. Tell them that he was buried in a borrowed grave. Tell them on the third day he got up with all power. And that's all I want to tell you this evening. That he's got power, power to save, power to heal, power to cast out demons, power to give sight to the blind, power to make the lame walk, power to make the dumb talk, power to heal sickness and disease. I don't care what book you preach, the gospel is in the word. You don't have to just preach out of the New Testament. The gospel is in the entire Bible. You can find the Bible, the gospel in Genesis. He's the seed of the woman in Exodus. He's the Passover lamb in Leviticus. He's the sacrificial one in Numbers. He's the uplifted one in Deuteronomy. He's the true prophet in Joshua. He's the captain of our salvation in Judges. He's the delivering judge in Ruth. He's our kinsman, redeemer. In Ezra, he's my restorer. In Job, he's my redeemer. In Psalms, he's my all in all. In Proverbs, he's our pattern. In Ecclesiastes, he's the lover of our souls. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he's the one who came to die for our sins. In Acts, he's our risen savior. In the epistles, he's the one on the right hand of the Father. In Revelation, he's the groom on his way back for his bride. I'm closing. I just want you to know the day. The gospel works. I don't care how far down you are. If you can hear the gospel, it will lift your burdens in your throat. If you hear the gospel, it will make you rich and you might not have a dime in your pocket. I don't care if all the weight is on your shoulders. There's something about the word of God that will let you know that he has your back. If you have messed up or if you mess it up right now, God is a God of a second chance. Matter of fact, he's more than a God of chances. Because if we're honest with ourselves, the day when we woke up this morning, that meant we had another chance. If we're screaming right now, that meant we've had another chance. And a lot of us will blow it before the day is over. But, but God is a God of mercy and grace. That's why the songwriter says, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning's new mercies I see. Is there anybody glad that every day we have new mercies? If you're grateful for new mercies, then why don't you act like it and give him some praise? Whatever you might be doing this morning, why don't you worship him with many, wherever you are? If you in your kitchen, if you in your shower, if you sitting on your throne, if you driving your car, why don't you worship him today? Do you know he's worthy? Anybody know he's worthy? 
I'm telling you, he's worthy. He deserves our worship. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, he's worthy. You need to worship him. Wherever you are right now, you need to worship him. He's worthy. Just think about all the opportunities. Just think about all the things you've been through in life. He saved you. He stepped in and stopped the devil from taking advantage of you. He's worthy of your praise this morning. Just think about it. Think about it. Think about his goodness. Think about the chances.